Okay, this is what I do remember. I remember watching a movie on Amazon Prime. The rush of brilliant red colors flooded my screen. My eyes transfixed. I remember saying to myself, One day, I will host a podcast and proudly announce, We watch Fury Redo, and it's time to visit Crazy Town tonight on... B B Movie Mania. Mania. Movie Mania. <laughs> Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bizarre, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B Movie Mania. And now, B Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles. Paul Brooks, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. Oh my goodness, hello everybody, welcome to another episode of B-Movie Mania. I am (laughs) so happy to be your host for this evening's festivities. My name is Paul Brooks. And uh, let's see here. What about the uh, the bald guy right here? Who the fuck are you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck are you? Jason Halls. Oh, okay, oh. let's see. The, the guy with the glasses right here. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> Who the fuck am I? Who are you, bitch? That, that was one of the and, lines, uh, right? And how about this guy here with the with the beard and the and the moppy hair? Oh. Are you a dumb whore or just a whore? <laughs> oh, you're talking about me? Everyone's yeah. favorite. Oh, this, yeah. This oh. one right here, the Mike Hayes right there. Oh, Mike Hayes. oh I'm sorry. I'm a that deaf one. whore. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining me on this episode. I'm talking to you guys, and I say that because. I wasn't sure if all of you were going to show up for this one. Uh, (laughs) I tried to think of anything else I could do, and nothing came up. Yeah. Yeah. We watched a uh, a film called Fury Redo. It came out in 2017, and it is a reboot of the original Fury, which came out in, I believe, 2005. Which I've heard it's an indie classic. (laughs) It is indeed, Chris. And I'm going to guess that you guys are itching so let's get to some quick takes. Quick takes! Uh, Jason Halls, start me off, please. <sighs> okay, I can do this. <laughs> you can do this. You got this. I don't think I've ever typed ugh so much in my notes or ignored so much voiceover. <laughs> like, it's... Uh... Chris Hudson, hit me with your quick take for Fury Redo. <sighs> I remember pouring myself a drink. Not just a single drink, but several drinks. The kind they serve at alcoholic bars where people drink. I remember turning the TV on and selecting this movie. I remember not wanting to watch it, much like the actor doesn't want to star in a movie for which they haven't read the script, or a miner forced to stay underground as the canaries die. I remember wondering why this movie was made, and what the filmmakers wanted to say about the human condition. Or perhaps they just wanted to tell a timeless story while giving their friends bands exposure and a showcase for their unparalleled musicality. I remember this is supposed to be a quick take. Uh, oh, I'm almost done. I remember endless narration <laughs> stated uneloquently without thought for words or any sort of coherent meaning. I remember wanting to be forgiving to the filmmakers because making movies is hard and I don't want to shit on their passion. But most of all, I remember disliking this film. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Mike Hayes. Paul. Yes. Who who is this movie even for? Thank you. That is an excellent question. Oh, my God. I have an answer. If I can do it, can I do it now? Well, we don't have a Paul quick take yet. I mean, Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. All right. All right. I mean, not that we're about to. We we don't have to follow any sort of format because this film didn't. No, I didn't. We could do Paul's quick take at the end. (laughs) When he rates it. Uh, I, I'm 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 interested to hear what you have to say about that, Jay. I think that it the movie is for the director because the director was the contractor who was supposed to fix the skylight. If you know what I mean. Oh, geez. I was gonna I was gonna bring that I up a little later. Wondering who that fucking lucky dude was. <laughs> yep. I did not know that. I did not know that. Thank yep. you for that uh, tidbit. 
Okay. The only one enjoying this movie. Oh, he enjoyed it. <laughs> I don't really have a quick take other than I know that you guys are a little pissed off, or at least you were last <laughs> night when you were... Paul, I just watched it again. Oh, God. I know. I don't know how you did it. Oh, my God. I, I'm on my fourth beer, is how. <laughs> Let me just state for the record... Uh, Stephanie Miller, my lovely girlfriend, introduced me to this film, so you can blame it all on her. Oh my god. Jesus, wait a minute. No, no, unpack that. She picked this? She said, I watched a movie last night. No. You have to come over right now and watch it with no. me. And we watched oh, it the Stephanie. next night. Oh. oh my god. Who are you? <laughs> Paul, if I remember correctly, too, didn't you send me the trailer for this a long time ago? I did indeed. I'm like, Jay, I'm having trouble deciding whether or not to pick this film for the podcast. <laughs> Jay, so this is on you too? The blood God is on your hands? It. I didn't know what I was doing. This, I, I mean, I didn't know. I, Mike, I didn't know. D Jay, do you remember what your response to me was? Yes. You're like, how is this even a question? Yes, you're picking <laughs> oh, this. Jesus. Maybe I was in my fungicide phase. I don't know. Oh, yep. God. Jesus. All right, guys, let's get into it. Um, how exactly does Fury redo start in the middle of things? Uh, a woman, Lainey McCoy, is covered in blood, and she's sitting in a hotel with a guy that looks like you had a baby with our friend Dave Jetter, and <laughs> except without <laughs> eyes. Yeah. Okay, this is what I do remember. I remember the red motel sign on the skyline, how it throbbed through the window afterwards. I remember dialing 911 and waiting by the window as the sirens wailed towards me. Did this did this movie really need to start in the middle of things? It would have been like five, maybe ten minutes shorter if if it just kind of like <laughs> Chris, it was an, into things. It was an hour and nine minutes long. Are 60, you really complaining? It was 69 minutes long, Paul. Say it right. 69. Thank you, Mike. Six, 69 minutes. Nice. God. Okay, so that, that, that must have been on purpose then. Wait, okay, okay. Because I'm going to bring this up now because... Of because of the structure of the film, you know, it like works its way back to the moment that the movie starts and kind of, kind of, sort of, right? Very Tarantino, uh, of course, yes. Yeah. Um, really, <laughs> really, really took Tarantino. A, took a fight out of Tarantino's style. God. Well, you know what? Never mind. I'm gonna st I'm gonna save this for the end because I have some big questions about the end. <laughs> okay, oh fair God. enough. We'll save it for the end. Save it for the podcast, Jay. Okay. Jay, I thought you were going to bring up the fact that someone dropped the camera at, so at some point during filming, and just every shot was then just red. <laughs> we'll get thought, there. We'll get there. Yeah. Well, why not talk about it now? We're talking about how it's going back and forth between current time and past. Everything in the past to show it, instead of it being like, I don't know, slightly different lighting, it's just fucking they took the green channel on the image and just put it to fucking red yeah it's a red <laughs> they did like a red pass yeah mike would you say it's rad filter joe rad <laughs> filter rad. i would it's literally oh. nothing's green if you watch the green lawns it's all red they took that green <laughs> channel and everything fucking just was red it. it's, well they oh did God. that at a specific moment though no, everything that's in the past is in that. I watched it a second time. It's oh, all there. Okay, yeah. Is it? But is it the past, or is it when she decides to start killing people? I thought it was nah, when she. It's, it's at the party's a little red too. It's not as red, but the party's red too. Okay, because the there's a moment party. where it jumps out at you. There's a yeah. moment where it, it yeah. just switches. Well, I literally thought someone broke the camera because at the beginning of the film, there's like missing pixels. There's like bars that go across the screen, and it's like, oh, those are the credits, Mike. No, those <laughs> those were blank lines across the image. <laughs> and so then, when I started realizing it was in red, when like you said, Jay, it really pops out. I was like, oh fuck, maybe someone dropped the camera and it fucked something up. Uh, <laughs> and then I realized that wasn't the case because you know, like it, then it, I started to see the pattern and just oh god, <laughs> is it red or is it salmon? <laughs> Now that I'm thinking about it. I think it starts off salmon. salmon and becomes pure red. But hey, here's a, now that you mentioned it, here's another thing I noticed. Is that our um, very lovely heroine, anti-heroine, I don't know what you'd call her, Lainey. Mm. Um, I noticed that um, it's only in the flashback scenes that she shows off her, her breasts. <laughs> well, the whole movie's a flashback scene. I mean, there's barely anything that's not flashback. Everything's <laughs> soaked in salmon jizz, and it's just fucking terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, about 80%, I would say, maybe, is flashbacks. Yeah. Uh, All right. All right. But let's get to our first scene that's not a flashback. Okay. We have a, a news report sort of describing some of the events. The first of many news reports, actually. Oh, yeah. 
And so uh, our lead, our lead uh, character here, Lainey McCoy, is a big story on the news and on the internet and the tabloids. Uh, and we got Dan Gilder doing his investigative reports. And this is a big story, guys. Best actor of the movie. Yeah, by far. This is Channel 6 News reporting live outside of the Titusville Police Department where prominent attorney Laney McCoy has just been arrested and taken into custody. His IMDb is the most is the most fleshed out also. He's been is in a ton of things. Yeah. I'm not surprised. Okay, so from there, uh, Laney meets her attorney, Rebecca Carlton. Oh, the attorney is the uh, the audience identification character. Mm, yes, and indeed. She, you know what? Yes, yeah. she really is because she doesn't. She acts like she does not want to be there at all. Oh my god, <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> I like that you guys are busting out like fucking actual <laughs> criticism of the film. <laughs> but Rebecca gives Lainey some advice. Does any anyone remember the particular piece of of advice she gives her up front at the very beginning? And is it something about not being so wordy or some shit? I'm going to have to advise you to not sound so intellectual. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yep. I was the one dialed 911. I talked to the police. I'm going to have to advise you to not sound so intellectual. I'm glad you picked up on that because it bears pointing out here that the sound for this movie is really rough. Jay, you're telling me that the uh, the crew didn't film with ceiling snakes hissing from the tops of the roofs? <laughs> where all the budget went the ceiling snakes no it's like it's really hard to understand a lot of what's being said if there's any noise going on in the room around you you're gonna have to crank the tv it was just very difficult so i feel like i eventually just started tuning out large chunks of what she was saying (laughs) because i'm like i can't hear it speaking of that uh chris uh, uh, there's large large portions of this movie have uh, narration in it, and it's oh God. it's very detailed. It's almost poetic. How would you describe it? I'm gonna say that uh, the lawyer told her not to sound so intellectual. She was pretty successful at that because she sounds <laughs> using really big words in really awkward combinations that just drones on and on and on in a sort of run-on sentence that doesn't really make that much sense if you really stop to think about it for a little bit. And she sounds a lot like a certain big politician that I don't want to get into right now because it will alienate so many of our listeners, I'm sure. But they, oh, she yeah. tends to talk on and on <laughs> oh, and on. God. Lo- can I, uses lots Paul, of can really I, big words. All right, we got it, Chris. Thanks. May oh, okay. I interrupt? All right, Paul, stop, I think yeah. I can... I have a way to answer your question because I do want to make a point about this. Yeah. The voiceover throughout the film is spoken as if it's a it's a monologue for a one-person show. <laughs> mm. That's it. Exactly. I had no idea. He looked vaguely familiar, but yet I couldn't place it. He was younger, that fashionably scruffy look, a hands-in-pocket sort of guy, affectionately annoying and not my type at all. She's literally talking like you do for that. Now, a lot of the time, these storytellers tell a, a very eloquent and interesting story. That's not the case for this, uh, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> but but it is that. And it, and and Jay, to solve your fucking uh, uh, noise problem, if you put those captions on, your brain explodes because nothing is typed correctly. <laughs> nothing is typed correctly. And 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 there's a period after every four words. It is insane. You know, guys, we're we're being pretty negative about this movie. I know. I don't want to be. I don't want. No, I was just. I just wanted to point that out. I'm not. I'm not saying. I just wanted. I to have say positives it. to say later. Just not right. I got to vent this right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, Mike, did you watch the movie the first time around without the uh, subtitles on, and then the second go around, you pu- you put them on? No, I've gotten into uh, really watching these movies with captions on because sometimes you see beautiful things, like uh, when we when when her young boy toy, which we'll get to here in a minute. Oh, Michael. Um, yeah, well, you know, when he when she leaves his house in the for the first time, he kind of does a barely goes kind of like a, a a breath and it captions his sexy groan. And <laughs> you know that means someone actually typed all these words out, meaning yes. what the fuck was the spell check problem? <laughs> Cuz <'Cause laughs> there's a lot of bad shit in this. All right, from from there, let's keep moving on here. We we uh Laney begins sort of deconstructing how the events at the beginning of the movie that we that that we saw, how how that unfolded, beginning with Angela's party on New Year's Eve. 
Oh, and uh, that, Mike, that's where Lainey meets Michael. Yep. Talk a little bit, uh, Mike, about this New Year's Eve party. What what goes down here? There's a, a handful of people who who are acting drunk in the unbelievable kind of way. Can I can I just say real quick, though, that for a New Year's Eve party, I think the reason why it's there aren't very, very many people here is that it's kind of a mid-afternoon New Year's Eve party. <laughs> about about 3.30 p.m.? Yeah. The, the party hasn't really begun yet. Yeah. Um, no, but they're, it's at a bar, apparently, and uh, uh, Lainey is drunk, and her friend Angela's drunk, but then she, then some other girl jumps up and talks to her, and it's one, one of many uh, pointless parts of the movie that uh, advances the plot in no way possible. Uh, no, this, it, she, well, no, she's that's there not for true. The, for the amazing you? cooking scene. No, no, that's Angela, not the woman who stands up and tries to convince her to come to her Jehovah's Witness play. Oh my God, you look so good. You should really come to the show that I'm doing. It's a one-woman show about being a Jehovah's Witness. A little weird, but I really think you should come. Oh, yeah, that's somebody different. <laughs> that's a person that shouldn't have been in the film. Oh, yeah. So anyway, she wa- she wanders over to a booth where Michael is, and she starts fluting with him, and, and they do some real bad pickup lines. Um, Favorite line of the movie right here. <laughs> yeah, this is... Uh, I, I groaned, but not a sexy groan. It was just a groan of like, oh, God. Can I, can I guess the line? Yeah, go, Jay. It's not my back I was hoping you'd rub. Uh, <laughs> that's a good guess. I, mo- I mostly just wanted to say that so you'd have to edit in the sound here. Oh, uh, damn it. <laughs> Let me guess. You want a back rub. Really? That's such a lame approach. It's not my back I was hoping you'd rub. <laughs> no, that, 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 that's a good guess, but it's actually, and I'll put this line in here as well, where the fuck you been all night? God. <laughs> right here. Where the fuck you been all night? Right here. I think one of my favorite lines in the movie comes up right after that when they go back to what I thought was his house, but later in the movie she mentions she's never been to his house, so I don't know where the fuck they were fucking. But they walk into a door and start fucking to sexy music, as the caption said. Um, were they grown? And during that, there's a voice. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. She has a VO that says, like a burn victim. First filleted, then scarred. And that's not a thing. I googled that. I found one case of a murderer that someone, a man killed someone, filleted them, then burned them. But that's not a normal thing. Can I always count on Mike for the good research? Thanks, Mike. For this whole scene, I have, oh no, the butt shot. He gives her his number. <laughs> hey, AJ, my, I have a similar note here. Um, does she sleep on a couch? Is that where they banged? Ugh, Seems I don't like care. That was the case. Ugh, but <laughs> so wait, where were they then? Okay, so if they weren't at his house, it and was they weren't his house. At her, but no, but she. I, but I thought it was her house. I think it's her house because she's there in the in the shoe taking off scene and where she's just checking the mail. But New Year's <sighs> Day, leave? it's eight in the morning, and she goes, "I'm I'm gonna go." Doesn't yeah, she? Or yeah, does she, she kick does. Him out? So that's what. Well, yeah, it's very confusing. But when later, when she's we, when we know she's off her rocker and she goes to his house, she says she. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Here, okay, I'm gonna say it now. Here's my problem with the movie: the fact that she's an insane person is used as if like it doesn't matter how well I write a script because it doesn't fucking matter because whatever she does doesn't have to make sense because she's crazy. You know what? That improved the score I'm going to give this movie. Thank you for that insight, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> this is supposed to be just a New Year's oh. Eve fling, right? Just a one night stand. But Lainey kind of gets caught up in things and keeps hanging out with Michael. They go to dinner wait, and wait. Uh, don't jump wait, too what? quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I got I got this line here. They're at dinner. God damn. This was supposed to be simple. <laughs> <laughs> the conversation was casual at first. Simple, polite. The how was your day type of thing. But then he cracked that smile of his, and I melted. God damn, this was supposed to be simple. On impulse, I held his hand until I could feel his pulse again. It's a shock to me every time, rediscovering the blood heat of another human being. I resisted the urge to suck his fingers, to slide them between the folds of my skirt. My underwear, I noticed, were already wet. Fuck. And you know what? <laughs> Guess what? I'm in my notes next. She doesn't resist because I have in the car. Oh no, graphic fingering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I want to also mention. Okay, so bef- when she calls him to go to this 
dinner thing, Michael picks up his phone and you can see what he has her in his phone as. <laughs> what, yeah, I couldn't I couldn't catch it. What oh, what was it, Mike? Oh, I rewound and paused in slow mode so much to get it. It is so good. <laughs> what She's is in there as my slam piece. <laughs> <laughs> My slam piece! <laughs> Chivalry's slam not piece. dead! Chivalry is alive! <laughs> wow. 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 Man, this movie is just layers and layers. It's like an onion. It makes you cry. Yeah, totally. 100%. Uh, you know what? That's the, sound, that's the sound of my score going up a little bit more now. <laughs> but, Jay, they don't even make it. No. Back no, home. What, what, where, where do we go? He <laughs> takes his slam piece to the Hyundai. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> Gets things warmed up with the, with the little with the finger express or whatever you want to call it, and then the slam a jamma, the slam a jamma, and uh, then yeah, they slam a jam in his Hyundai. <laughs> wow! <laughs> and let's just remind the audience right here: all of this is in bright red hues the entire oh, yeah. time, and in the middle of the day. Yeah, and not just that, though. This is where I wrote down the note. It feels like the movie's been going on for a while. But I wrote, oh, God, I'm not even 20 minutes into this. <laughs> <sighs> hey, listen, say whatever you want. This thing moves. Yeah. Does it not? <laughs> yeah, sure. No, it does. No. It moves. Only when you look at the clock, it does, but it drags. So, anyway, can All we right. do the lawyer thing now? Like, we're back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't think there's really anything yes. of note in that particular. It's it's just a lot of like kind of going over the same thing over and over again. This is before she meets up with Angela again, right? Yeah, that's what's next. Okay. Uh, Lainey meets up with Angela at a coffee shop to, they just sort of bump into each other, but they end up chatting and it's a pretty interesting scene. Chris, you want to talk a little bit about this here? <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, um, first of all, the, uh, what, wait, which, which the one with the big cleavage that was, what was her That's name? That's Angela. Angela. Okay. Yeah. Angela. This is really, <clears throat> this is really a big scene for the, uh, the citizens of Titusville where this, I guess this was <laughs> filmed <laughs> because one way to put it, <laughs> because Lainey and what was her name? What? The other girl, Lainey Angela, and the other girl. I don't, Lainey, yeah. and Angela. Lainey and Angela. They're just talking about getting it on and how much they love Dick and all that stuff. But who's and, Dick? Um, I guess Michael's Dick. I don't even remember. Yeah. Yes, they both fucked Michael. That's where Lainey finds out that Angela once fucked Michael. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. I couldn't hear there it, we go. so I, I wasn't sure. It explains a lot. <laughs> It does. And what's really cool about this scene is that they, the <laughs> camera constantly cuts away to the other people in this coffee shop looking uh, eavesdropping in the conversation and just looking disgusted. And it's not just like one or two people. It's like five, six, every guy, like in, every guy in this coffee shop. They cut to to make a terrible like expression. Jay, how do you feel about the blocking and the cinematography of this scene? It's genius. <laughs> <laughs> so Lainey has a few girlfriends over to her place. Uh-huh. And oh, uh yeah. couple couple girls while they're sitting in the in the dining room, Lainey is cooking up a stew in the kitchen. I, I, this that is not how you cook a stew. I'm just gonna say that right now. <laughs> I, I know that all you guys are very familiar with how to cook a stew. Jay, mm-hmm. what's going on with this uh Laney stew. Uh, well, it's it may be Laney stew, but it's Angela's body that's in the stew. Angela. Yeah, there's an arm sticking out. Of it the was killed at some point. We don't see it. No. Well, th- at this point, I think this is where Laney goes from zero to sixty in like three seconds because yeah, she'd never like killed anyone. I I can only assume. I don't know the character's backstory. <laughs> hey, we might get a Fury prequel somewhere may, along the way. We can only hope. But she's cooking this, but apparently somewhere along the way, she chops up her friend and puts her in a pot, in a big stock pot. And, but all that's really in there are some vegetables, um, her ring finger, I think, and like an arm hanging out of the pot. Like, that's not how you cook a stew. Like, you've got to put it all in there. You mean she sort of like dices there. up the arm and puts it in there? No, no, no. It's just the whole arm just sticking right out of the pot. <laughs> <laughs> just sort of. It's really there to make us, you know, it, it, it's beating us over the head that, yep, she's cooking her friend. Like, the first time I watched it, I didn't catch that she had, she was mad at Angela for having had sex with Michael. So I saw this big thing in there, and I thought, is she, is this 
fake? Is this like a, a style thing? Is what's going on here? That she's not really cooking it up for someone. Oh, she is. But she did because because she she then pulls a third bowl out for herself, opens a can of Campbell's chunky soup, of which Campbell's should should sue for, and then pours <laughs> it in. And she eats cold soup while she feeds her two friends the uh, Angela goulash. Yeah, but I thought her friends would be in on this because she's not really hiding the fact that she's cooking an. There's an arm in her stew. Like, yeah. that's oh. right in plain view her of the kitchen. Her friends are four feet away. Yeah. And there's an arm sticking out of a pot in her kitchen. And she yeah. also, so she intentionally eats cold Campbell's soup instead of the stew, as if I don't want to eat this. But then she still picks up Angela's finger and, like, sucks on it and, like, just gets it all up in her <laughs> mouth. So she's obviously not grossed out about, I don't know. I don't know, guys. Hey, we're almost to my favorite line of the movie. <laughs> I hope I hope it's what I think it is. <laughs> is it in this scene, Jay, or the next scene? Well, d- what's the next scene in your mind? No, we're treated to a flashback within a flashback yeah, with yeah. Uh, Lainey's friend Heather. Yeah, go for it. You know what? Just go for it. Go for it. Okay, so I don't know how they get on this because whatever they're talking and so girl this gr- talk, you know, girl talk, and this girl is talking about how she's going to get her skylight fixed, and it cuts <laughs> to the scene <laughs> where she's in the bedroom. God. I know and what it is. <laughs> It's, this is the director, okay, the guy who's fixing it, and she immediately starts banging this guy, and while she's banging him, she's moaning, fix my skylight. Yeah! I did legitimately yeah. laugh at that. <laughs> hey, the Watchmen? Fury Redu just called, and you're off the hook for the most pointless sex scene in a movie. Don't worry about it anymore. Because fucking well, what? A little it something was... for all you Watchmen fans out Ooh. there. <laughs> but no, it is pointless. I know there was some good-looking boobs and butts and stuff in that one, at least. You know, <clears throat> but it's pointless. Yes, but can I just say that this, this scene was far from pointless? Because this gave the director his big chance to really get his face up in some titties. Dude, he went for it. He was best acting in the entire movie right there. That's why this whole movie exists. That's yeah. why he yeah. wrote That's gotta be it. So so Lainey yeah. starts getting weird and and pretty obsessive over Michael. She goes over to his place. She finds a woman there who who claims to be Michael's friend, but Jay Lainey is not having it. She gets into Michael's phone. Things really get uh, ramped up here. Talk about this scene a little bit. Lainey pulls up to Michael's house, and there's this girl on his couch That's he's going to help her make a music video, and they do not get along. <laughs> that um, would be an understatement. <laughs> yeah. Who the fuck are you? Who are you? Where's Michael? He went to get pizza and a beer. Who are you again? Are you fucking him? Not that it's any of your business, but no. Michael is, assures her that there's nothing going on between them, and the girl leaves, and he's going to go take a shower. And so then Lainey, yeah, goes through the phone and hears a message from his roommate slash girlfriend. Then she takes a selfie of herself and then, like, saves it on his home screen of his phone. And then she takes a marker and writes, Slut on a photo of Michael. Is that what it said? I couldn't tell what it said, but that makes sense I, now. I, I yeah. just assumed, that's what I thought it looked like. Jay, you, you missed the craziest part of this fucking scene. I'm sorry. <laughs> the craziest part of this fucking scene is that Michael is gone when, she, when Lainey gets there. She scares Jen out. Michael comes back with the pizza, and he's like, hey, why don't you stay? I got pizza. Eat the pizza. And then Michael, with a fresh hot pizza, goes and takes a fucking shower. <laughs> I didn't even think mean? about that. You just brought home a pizza. You're not going to well, eat a goddamn shower. He does that because Lainey has to be <laughs> free for a moment so that she can go beat the other girl's head in with a baseball bat. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a thing that happens. Hey, but before we get into the baseball bat beating scene, I just want to bring up a point that I don't think we've addressed yet. But did anyone notice like a red filter over everything in this movie? <laughs> what? Like it's seriously over every single scene. I don't know what you're talking about. It was all very lush green tones throughout the film. <laughs> so I just want to touch on this baseball uh, beating scene. Oh my God. Mike, would you describe it as uh, some solid practical effects here? Or, <laughs> Well, being someone who has done visual effects on a feature-length film... Uh, True. I, 
I've seen worse, I guess. Um, <laughs> that's also true. There's some some uh, d- you know blood that's coming out at the camera, and a neighbor comes out. Like, hey, everything okay? <laughs> okay, can I can I do the next thing? Because uh, it also has maybe one of my favorite lines. Okay, yeah, go for it. Yeah. So finally, the lawyer the, tells her to eliminate that you know part of the t- from her testimony, like you know where she murdered someone. And Lainey resists, and finally the lawyer blows up on her. And as she's going <laughs> off right. on Lainey, for, she says, Everything I've been trying to do is build a case. Just try to find some way to defend your ass. And all you're doing is talking in circles. I can't make heads or tails of half the shit you've written down and said. And I just thought, <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Yep, that is totally, <laughs> definitely the audience identification role. But but let's talk about Lainey's sort of attitude throughout these proceedings here, because she's with her lawyer going through all these events that happen. At no point does she deny, really, any of it. Yeah. She just, she kind of says, I just want you to understand what happened. That, and she <sighs> also claims she doesn't remember part of it, but yeah, she fucking does. Like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> At no point is she a sympathetic character. Once you realize she's bonkers, you're just like, ah, oh, Jesus. So we flash back again and... Um, <laughs> oh, God, not again. Oh, yeah, again. Julie is over at Lainey's place. She's one of the girls that was over earlier during during the stew scene. She's the one you yeah. might recall with the all the wrinkles on her face. Not by my opinion, but what Lainey said to her. Yeah, and Mike, I know you got a lot of quotes written down, so if you need to bust any of them out at any point, just just do it. I decided that what causes the harm is not <laughs> is not being lied to, but the long drop of finding out that you're the only person in the play who doesn't know the plot. Which I think is a very apt fucking voiceover for this oh, fucking yeah. movie. Meta, very meta. Sorry, continue. Julie gets into the fridge over at Lainey's place, and uh, all right. And now this is this is why Lainey really needs to clean her goddamn fridge. You leave a hand in there. <laughs> of who, yeah. I don't know whose hand it is. Probably her other friend that she cooked. But she left her hand in there, and <laughs> Julie's all like, "I'll get it out of the fridge." And <laughs> and Lainey made no attempt to keep her out Chris, of the fridge. Chris, <laughs> you've broken this wide open. Holy shit! Sees the hand. And then Lainey's like, okay, gotta kill you. Chris, yeah, and, and she kills her with a burning hot pan of stir fry to the face. <laughs> oh, Mike, God. what are you Chris, trying to say? What? You just broke this wide open, Chris. Why is there a second hand? Either either she keeps saving hands to eat, because that maybe is Jen's hand, or maybe she's keeping Angela's hand because she's going to use it in another stew a second time. Maybe she's reusing them. I don't know what's happening, but I'm really excited now. <laughs> <laughs> Did your score just go up a couple points? Uh, maybe one. You know, when you really stop and think about it, they put a lot of uh, thought into this script. I like the use of the weapon. I like the use of the burning hot pan of stir fry as a murder weapon. Yeah, that's pretty great. I mean, she clocks it's pretty her. effective, yeah. That just sucks. I mean, that's like, ouch. So, Lainey goes to work. Yeah, she does. <laughs> she goes to work all right. Uh, oh, yeah. Methinks she gets a little horny while she's in her office. Just pulls out a, a double ended dildo, oh. goes like- <laughs> up her skirt, and she's like, Sometimes it's good to have sex at work or something like that. I didn't write this, this line down. <laughs> but this is a good oh, line. There. I know what you're talking about. She says, A little bit of sex can be dangerous. I doubt that the details are relevant of precisely what I did behind the locked door of my office alone in my business suit. All I'm saying is that a little bit of sex is a dangerous thing. <sighs> because basically, if you're getting sex all the time, it's you're all good. If you're not getting sex, well, you know, not yeah. much you can do about it. But if you're getting just a little bit, it makes you horny. Which which is a callback to the cabin scene where she her voiceover says, uh, safe sex is an oxymoron if I've heard one. <laughs> <laughs> so true. God, she's dropping truth bombs left and right. God, just get me to that spilt milk scene. Uh, please. Okay, we're there. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Are we there? We're there. Yep. Talk to me about the milk scene. We get a shot where someone set a camera on the counter, <laughs> and and she spills a, a, a an open like quart of milk on the counter. And as she's cleansing it up, she says... 
It was already too much for me, and I hadn't even begun. <laughs> I knew from the moment I opened my eyes in the morning that I was all alone in this. I knew it. I was in this with him, alone. And you know, I can't even tell you what a relief it was to find myself in that space, a zone in which it seems possible that something else, someone else, could take on the impossible task of being me. A zone in which someone else decided every second how to deploy my body and mind. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, Mike, Mike, I say those words to myself every single time I spill milk infomercial style. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah, knock it over like some milk. All right, monologue time. All right, so we've, we've come to a <laughs> crucial moment in the film. Lainey picks up Patty from the train station. Of course, we remember in a previous scene where she listened to the voicemail. And Lainey takes it upon herself to pick up Patty from the train station. And things start out real sweet here, Jay, but uh, turn pretty ugly pretty quick. They sure do. So are you a dumb whore or just a whore? Excuse me? I asked, are you a dumb whore or just a whore? <laughs> oh god. And and she does, the Patty doesn't get it. And then eventually no. Patty gets it and tries to run over a bridge and then Laney shoots her. You have nowhere to go, Patty! Answer the fucking question! What question? How long have you been fucking up? I don't know, six months? Wrong answer! There's some good lines in here, Mike. You got any written down? No, but I do have written down that this ca- scene in the car where where Lainey is like going fucking straight bonkers on Patty here is, I think, <laughs> genuinely terrifying. Like, it's actually a really t- a tense scene. Yeah, I would say this is the best scene of the film. Like, yeah. it's really good. And they go back and, and Patty eventually starts getting on and gets scared and wants to get out. And eventually she lets her out. And all that tension is ruined when Patty runs across, halfway across the bridge. Lainey shoots at her twice but misses. And then Patty just stops and turns just around stops. and says, yep. fine, fucking shoot me, I guess. And it's just, it's just, God... Like, uh, Very no, cinematic. The line is, you have nowhere to go, Patty, and she does have somewhere else to go, the other side of the fucking bridge and beyond. <laughs> <laughs> Jump in the river. There were anywhere, some woods anywhere. just on the other side. I mean, she could have hidden easily. Let's just say she's frozen with fear. No, she turned around. That's not frozen. <laughs> well, regardless, Patty bites the bullet, quite literally. She dies. Uh, a pretty gruesome death, and the fury oh boy. Uh, strikes again. That's the media's name for... for it's her killer Marty. nickname. Yeah. No one yeah. should have mentioned it, because it's a very bad name <laughs> for a killer. Uh, after that, we're going we're gonna to breeze through this, guys. After that, Michael, having a little bit of car trouble, and Lainey just happens to drive by. Jay, this is where we get our caboose. Or, yeah. Or, Jay, you want to take... Who, want, who wants well, I, this? I just like the hotel. It's a hotel of, made of cabooses. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah, it's a real cool. thing. She takes Michael back to the uh, Caboose Motel where she's staying. And, Chris, what goes down in here? We got some pretty pivotal stuff going Oh, yeah. On. Well, okay. Well, <clears throat> so uh, Lainey tells Michael that uh, she's got some stuff to give back to him. So it'll only take a minute. So Lainey says, okay, here's your stuff. I'll, I'm just going to go to the bathroom. So she goes to the bathroom, but she doesn't say why. It's the change into some sexy lingerie that you find out momentarily. Oh, yeah. Da, 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 oh, yeah. Da, da, da. Uh, now, I can't <laughs> tell if... I can't tell if, if the lingerie is actually red or if it's just the filter <laughs> making it red. It could be royal blue for all we know. <laughs> we don't know. We but she comes out no of the bathroom with this very sexy number and, and walks right up to Michael. And I don't remember all the details because it's kind of a blur at this point. Who wants, who wants, who wants to take it from here? Yeah, they, I will. They get into a fight... She flips out and forbids Michael to like see people or whatever, and then you she forbid me to see whom? Yeah, and then <laughs> she, she like hits him, or she just kind of motions her hands toward no. his face, and his <laughs> eyes fall out of his head. <laughs> she, she she punches his goddamn uh, eyes out. Who the fuck do you think you are? I'm your girlfriend, Michael. No. If you love me, you wouldn't want to look. You wouldn't want to look at other woman. You wouldn't want to fuck. <laughs> Not an exaggeration. Eyeballs on the floor of the Caboose <laughs> yeah. Motel. They fell out of his head. As the eyeballs hit the floor. As the eyeballs like hit the retina floor. Like retina detached. Sorry. Yeah. 
e- everything that connects to the brain uh, detached on the floor. I mean, that's that's a name worthy of of fury. Like that's she where the name punches her, from, like just almost just slaps him in the face or something. Just hits him in the face and his eyes fall out. She, they should have just made this like a superpower and had her do that to everybody in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can make eyeball soup. That would have been cool. Yeah. Yeah. I would have given this a much higher score had that happened. This well, this this leads me to uh, uh, the problem that I alluded to earlier. So now we're back to the beginning of the movie that we saw, where Michael is sitting there with his eyes fallen out, and she's covered in blood. Kind of. We've come for full circle. We have, but then, like, that's that's it. I mean, it's over. So, like, the last thing you see, or, see, or like, the, the latest chronological thing that happens is her in jail. So, like, nothing happens with the lawyer, or there's no direction of where it's going to go. Yeah. It just ends. We, we do find out Michael's fine in the credits. Oh, that's right, yeah. Well, well I wouldn't call that fun. Well, yeah. well, he's got bandages over his eyes, and he's drinking a beer, and then just throws it down like, yeah. <laughs> yes, oh. so if that's your definition of fine, I guess he's fine. Uh, let me <laughs> drop a little bit of knowledge on you guys. Uh, am I the only one that watched the original Fury for this podcast? Jesus. Is that the one with Shia yes. LaBeouf and the tank? <laughs> no, you know what? It's It's... It's my movie. It was my burden to bear, but I did watch the original Fury. I think, I think so I know what say, you're say. I think you know we're getting at. <laughs> let me just say, I thought it was interesting think, that the entire I think movie. I know. I think I know what you're going to say, Paul. Mike, can I say it, please? Yeah, just go ahead. But I'm just. I just. I think I know what you're going to say. <laughs> okay. The entire original film was basically the exact same except line for some line. Of the, except they were improvised some lines for new technology, right? <laughs> Shut up and let me say it. <laughs> I, I, I think I know what you're saying, though. The whole movie is basically the same except for the very, very end. After we go full circle and we see Michael with his eyes torn out, it suddenly cuts to... An insane asylum where Lainey is in a straitjacket and Michael is her nurse. <laughs> what? And he's and he's checking on her to make sure she's okay. And and all of her narration is all the stuff that she's saying in the asylum. But that was not in redo at all. Hmm. I can't. I don't know how hmm. I feel about that. I don't yeah, either. I, I kind of like that they left it out. I don't know. To make it more real, because that the asylum thing is kind of a cliche, right? Like, right. oh, it was inside of a crazy person's head or a dream. So I kind of like that they did leave it out and made it just a real, like, true crime, quote unquote, kind of a thing. Right. But here's the thing that I really want to ask you guys. She lunges at Michael. His eyes fall out of his head. <laughs> Honest question. Do you guys think it was an accident on her part? No. <laughs> she no. meant to do it? You know, well, yeah. can, I, can I just say that, uh, yeah, it was definitely purposeful because... Early on, we find out that Michael is actually a videographer. You know, he's making music videos and stuff. Right. Ah. So what better punishment for a videographer yep. than to make his eyes fall out of his head? Wow. Brutal. Yeah. Brutal. It is called Fury. Chris is pulling yeah. in those things. Paul, can I can right. I quickly comment on what, what I thought you were getting at? Please. Um, I, I read a little trivia, an IMDb trivia, that said uh, some of the lines from the script were improvised because... <laughs> Uh, to update for modern technology, which which gave me two questions. One, they use the same scripts. Yeah. Why? Two, did they not think to update certain references? Because there's a line I'll read to you guys from the scene where <laughs> where she where Lady and her two friends are talking, and she's talking about they're like, "What would you even talk to a twenty year old about?" And she says. <laughs> I know what you're going to say. Say it. Occasionally in passing, I would explain to him who Virginia Woolf was. Or William Wadsworth. Fine. Fair enough, right? Fair but enough. She, but she continues with... This is 2017. <laughs> she continues with... He would fill me in on Courtney Love or Eve Six. She's, so early in the film, early in the film, she says she's 41. So in, this is 2017. So, so I think she said 42. 40, she said, 40, she said she almost 45. She was 20 when those fucking bands were doing their thing. She knew who the fuck they were. <coughs> and, he, and he, as a 25-year-old, was five. <laughs> you know what's interesting about that, Mike? In the original Fury... 
She also says that she's 42, <laughs> pushing 45. So how old is she? Is she a vampire? Wait, see, I have that written down. Maybe she's a vampire, literally. <laughs> really? Yeah, I swear to you. I, uh, is she an alien? Is she a vampire? Cool. You know, so I got that written down. Hey, I, found, uh. I found another interesting thing about this movie. Um, that uh, What was his name? Gorman? I forget the guy's first. The, the director, writer-director of this, said that uh, this movie is loosely based on his second marriage. No. Whoa. Oh, God. God. man. No, it all makes sense. Holy shit. <laughs> that oh. was, must have been a one hellish marriage. Oh, God. Uh, well, guys, uh, quite the experience, needless to say. If any of our B-movie maniacs are listening and want to see more... This film group does have a Roku channel. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mike, you alluded to it earlier. What 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 should somebody search for if they're on Roku and they want to see more from from these guys? Maddie GTV. There's like three. <laughs> there's three channels if I remember right when I was looking this stuff up. There's like Maddie GTV, Maddie GTV Late Night, and then there's like another one. They've also got a lot of stuff on Amazon Prime. Yeah, like a bunch of movies on Amazon Prime. Jay, you're going to be hitting some of that up when we're done recording tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Very convincing. <laughs> Not all of it is uh, like psychotic thriller stuff. They also have the rights to stream the 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 TNT original television event uh, starring Noah Wiley about Bill Gates versus Steve Jobs. So what? <laughs> I, uh, they, I just I was looking at what they have going on, and that's Mark, streaming okay. in February. They they are the, the people behind this. They're clearly really into what they do. Oh, and absolutely. They're, re- they're really trying hard to, like, create, like, a company that has a lot of media. And that's commendable. Oh, it absolutely. is. Yes, yes. All right. Well, guys, I think that about <laughs> wraps it up. Let's get into rating time. Da, 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 da. Rating time. One out of a hundred... Dan Gilder investigative reports. Fuck and Mike, you. I'll do the graphic. I'll do the graphic. <laughs> what do you rate Fury Redo? Chris Hudson. Oh, boy. Let's get the downer out of the yeah, way here. Let's, yeah, I'm probably think this is... So when I rate these, I try to compare, the, to compare it to other movies we've rated and keep some sort of consistency or uh, continuity with established mythology. They're trying really hard. You know, it's hard to make a movie, so I, I can't. I try. I don't want to get too down on them, but I can. I did not enjoy this movie at all, and <laughs> I don't understand. I mean, there were some some moments here talking with you guys that maybe it would be fun to watch with friends when you're having a drink or two, but I'm just. I just cannot recommend this at all, and so I'm thinking. I'm trying to compare it to any movie that we have watched, and I realized that I don't think there is one that well. I, well, I just want to say that I enjoyed Josh Kirby twice as much as I enjoyed this movie. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, so shit. I gave Josh Kirby a six. Whoa. So I'm going to have to what? rate <laughs> Fury Redo a three. Whoa. Wow. Oh, man. Wow. wow. That is the lowest score ever on this podcast. Yeah, I just, I would rather watch Josh Kirby, Time Warrior, <sighs> than this movie. Wow. Mike Hayes, balance this out a little bit here. Well, speaking of balance, I feel since I've watched this movie twice, I deserve two votes. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, I'll allow it. Yes! All right. So... Here's what I have to say about this. For vote one, let me let me I want I have two lenses to put this through. While while I I was a bit negative throughout it, and I was a bit mocking throughout this this discussion of the film, I do think that the progression and revealing of Lainey's character of actually being batshit fucking crazy is pretty good. And and there were a lot of times I wasn't sure if I was squirming because I was of uh, how awkward the filmmaking was or of how awkward and, and much I didn't like the scene from the context of what Lainey was doing in the scene. So Because she had a lot of weird, creepy stuff she was doing, and I... And I, a lot of the time, was very creeped out by it. I was very mm-hmm. uh, cringing about it. And I, I do actually think that was intentional. I don't think that was just me being... Right. Yeah, I think that was actually really good. Um, so overall, I'm going to give it a 50. Okay. <laughs> I think that was fun. And I, if you want to see an indie film, 
then check this out. Like you can learn. I think you can learn a lot from this movie. And I think they did a lot, a lot of really good stuff in terms of the revealing of how crazy this character actually was. Especially with now, the second. How's, the, how's this going to work with the second vote? Oh, a ten. Because I hated it. <laughs> I hated it. But out of right, now, you know what? Now you're doing the graphic. <laughs> No, no, I, I, w- I just, I didn't enjoy it all that much, and I, I wouldn't recommend necessarily anyone necessarily watch it for a fun factor, but I do think it did a lot of stuff really well, actually, as much as, uh, as nitpicky as I was. I think overall it had a good stuff, but enjoyment level was a 10. Jason Hulse. I thought I was going to sound like the bad guy here, but compared to Chris, no. <laughs> not so much. <laughs> you know, uh, part of me says... You know, these guys are trying hard, and it's clear. <laughs> it's clear that, I mean, they got a lot going on. You just look into their company. They got a lot happening. The other part of me says, <laughs> I have never looked forward more to shoveling snow than I did last night because I had to shovel my driveway after this movie, and I was like, maybe that won't be so bad. Well, I'm sorry, but you only get one vote. I know. So, <laughs> oh, God. You know, and again, I, I don't, I don't want to be too mean or you know they got a movie done they got it done it was the second go round, and i feel like there was still (laughs) a lot of problems but um i don't know where i'm going with this i'm just gonna say 15 because of the tv reporter oh my god (laughs) so you would rather watch this than josh kirby what i don't remember what i gave josh kirby do you you gave it 11, Jay. An 11? An 11. I looked it up yes, today. Yes, okay, yes. No, I would rather watch this again than Josh Kirby. <laughs> this is shorter. I'll give you that. I mean, there's a lot of jaw-dropping stuff when you watch this. You're like, they're, they're, it's just crazy. It, I mean, you can you can have fun with this movie. Okay, well, thank you. Yeah. Because, I, listen, you guys are entitled to your opinion, so I don't want to say that I'm disappointed, but I'm a little bit surprised because, for me, this movie was... Laugh out loud funny on multiple <laughs> oh, occasions. God, Paul. And the type of experience that really sticks with you for better or worse. I'm going to go 90. What? Wow. What? Dan. Wow. <laughs> Dan oh, oh Gilder God. investigative reports. Needless to say, it holds your attention. The pace is extremely fast, it really moves. And it's a ton of fun to get together with some people and and watch this thing. I've done it. I've had people over and watched it, and people just lose their minds. And that's the type of experience that I enjoy. Okay, well then, listeners, you've got to get together with people to watch this. Yeah, Do not I watch can this see on that your being own. Better, Paul. This is your like cup of tea, though, right? This is this y- is yes. If I look for what Paul's need, we all like a broad bunch of B movies. Paul's Cup of Tea is a modern indie B movie style thing. You like, you love the room. You love Neil Breen and all that kind of stuff. Breen, and I think a lot of But this is you. Much like my one of my favorite things sure. is like bad like eighties and nineties kids movies, uh, which I don't <laughs> think all of you like as much as I do. Like it's all like a thing. But so, you know, <laughs> that's a good point, Mike. It should be said that at this point in my B-movie career, I need the hard stuff. So this is like heroin, and I don't necessarily <laughs> recommend it if you're just starting out with B-movies. You know, start with some Troll 2 or something. <laughs> <laughs> On the next episode of B-movie Mania... I, I want to play you guys the trailer for the movie I've picked because I don't think I can describe it well enough with, without just showing it to you. You want to play it now? I'll, well, I'll announce the name after the trailer, but we're going to watch the trailer right now. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay. My name is Slash Gallagher. It is a time of revolution. Come and join me in my cause. The California Corporation took Los Angeles away from us. Now I'm here to take it back. President. All Slash Gallagher wants is power. I send you out to stop him, and you say he's invincible, sir. I saw Gallagher walk through flame and gunfire like it was nothing. He killed half my men. A direct assault, sir. There's hostages in there. We get Gallagher any way we can. Haven't you learned by now that every time we play this game, you lose? Man. 
Yeah. <laughs> There's just so many. I read a review about this that said there were too many explosions. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just so many explosions. Uh, you can watch it on YouTube. Uh, check it out. Hologram Boom. Man. It looks Ooh. really good. Very yeah, cool. It does look really good. Mike, you uh, you want to come over here and watch Fury Redo for a third time with me? Paul, you can fuck off. <laughs> I would watch it again with people. Yeah, I would too. Yeah, yeah. Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydy? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out, touch them. They are touching themselves, and they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo! We would really, really love it if you left a rating or a review on iTunes. Five stars is preferable. I think five stars minimum. <laughs> five five minimum. minimum review. <laughs> we'll take seven stars if you got it in ya. Hey, and buy a t-shirt. Buy a t-shirt. Bmoviemania.com, you can buy our t-shirts. They're dope shirts, can, right, Paul? Those are dope shirts, and we got new shirts on the way. Yeah, so we do. Back. No, just buy the first one and then buy the second one later. I wear one <laughs> every day. <laughs> Me too. I wear them as underwear. It's good for draping over your lover's face. <laughs> Jay, are you talking about the office dildo? Bye-bye. I'm stopping. Definitely talking about the office dildo.